Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. What's going on, fellas? My name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about these things. They call them video cards. Computers. All up on the internet today on the program. GTX 780 Ti launched November 7th, 2013. A revamp to their Kepler generation that had already been out for a little while, but a worthwhile revamp nonetheless. Definitely was a powerful ass GPU that to this day can hold its own. I mean, we're talking a good six years ago this was launched and it's still pretty relevant or is it? here today in 2019. Well, we're going to here to discuss and launch some pretty awesome games from around the time and show you some benchmarks and things. We got a little fire strike running right now on my test bench here. It's the uh, 7820X 8-core processor from Intel running at just about 4.8 gigahertz, you know, 32 gigs RAM. High ass test bench. Going to get the most out of it. And I'm sure you can see it's getting a little loud there in the old CPU benchmark. I uh, got two of them. So I will be doing a follow-up to this video where we do an SLI setup, but I recently did the old uh, 690 there, and it's a similar generation, and it runs an SLI, obviously, and it didn't do so hot with 2019's title. So I thought it was better to just do an actual retrospective as I never have on the 780 Ti specifically. I have, however, on the Titan Black, and I'll put that video here or whatever. Not a very good video. I rewatched it. But anyways, uh, there's a little bit of disparity between this and that, mostly having to do with VRAM, which makes the Titan Black a little bit better option for 2019, as we'll see. But ooh, we're coming up on 12... 208 with a graphic score of 13,273. Okay, we'll look at that in just a split second here, but I want to show you the overclock. Now, my buddy Aaron uh, donated these for review on the channel here. I want to thank him very, very much to get a re retrospective on these graphics cards, and uh, he's a big fan of them, but of course, they are, they have their shortcomings around, you know, now that they're, they're getting up there. Some shortcomings over, uh, over even some of the previous generation or lower tiered cards like the 770 that kind of messed things up a little bit for it, but we'll get there. So yeah, uh, I want to show the overclock I'm running. I can get it over 1200 without this thing sounding like a total vacuum, but in case you're not in the know, a lot of graphics cards these days don't mind running at 80, 90 degrees. Well, that's, that is still pretty high, but let's say 80 degrees. This likes 65 for stability, which means this stock cooler on here isn't the greatest for overclocking. And you can certainly find some AIB partner cards, some lightnings, some, you know, some EVGA classifieds with much better coolers that will clock higher than I'm showing. In fact, Aaron sent me two water blocks that he had on these things and he had uh, different BIOSes on them and stuff like that. Changed the power, uh, the power table on them so that we can put them on water and get some real performance out of them. But I wanted to show you a more achievable 1200 megahertz overclock and I think it's about 3850 on the memory. You might be able to get it near 4000 depending on if, but that's three gigs of VRAM, remember. So if we see that score, the uh, 12,208 with a 1327, where does that land us uh, as a direct competitor here in 2019? Well, we can go over to my Firestrike results and see that it doesn't even do as good as a GTX 1063 gigabyte. We've got a 13,948 on what's well, a quad core. It's gonna be a little bit of a different kind of score here. But uh, it should give you a good idea. It's, it's beating it on the whole because it's got eight cores to deal with instead of just the four I was testing with that 1063 gigabyte. But the graphics score 13,273 and 13,948. So, wow, that GTX 1060 I was uh, playing with was an EVGA model with one fan that was like this big. So, this is looking pretty harsh if you ain't got a good power supply uh, in, in 2019. Now, there is no direct competitor 
but let's say that the, I don't know, however they're going to call it, 1650 Ti or something like that ends up being close to this. Uh, but keep in mind, the, it's basically the same thing. GTX 1063 gigabyte, 7880 Ti. And this launched priced at $700. Mind you, it's been six years, but I was hoping for a little bit more out of that. And a lot of that has to go with the VRAM issues. This doesn't have any VRAM, it's terrible. So the specs on it are 2880 CUDA cores, a base clock of 875, a boost clock of uh, 928, which actually goes around 1000, uh, 1030, depending on if with uh, GPU boost and stuff like that, uh, and you move the power slider up a bit. But, you know, as long as you have the uh, cooling headroom, it'll go a little higher than that, but not much. That sounds really low considering our top tier cards and even our mid tier cards are at two gigahertz these days but you are able to get this up to about 1200 on pretty much any 780 ti out there uh close and uh you know get the memory frequency up there too but uh it's got a seven gigabits per second memory clock uh standard memory config is 3072 uh megabytes and it's got a 384 bit memory interface so you know, GPU boost 2.0, so it does have some of these, you know, these features, these modern features, but not a whole, you know, lot going for it these days, if you ask me, like for a flagship product. Now, when I reviewed the uh, Titan Black, it had six gigs of VRAM, it was able to uh, do 1440p benchmarks in my test last year, and that's because it had the VRAM to back it up, and this doesn't. So what's going on with the VRAM there? Well, uh, if you want to check out I just before we step into it, I, want, I always like to show an Antex thoughts at the time of launch. And there was like, well, they've one up themselves a couple of times because at this time, AMD wasn't doing so well. Their cards were very warm and they're getting just into the 280, 290X, uh, you know, territory. And this was beating it at the time, but those cards had more VRAM, four gigs at least. This only has three. But this with a lesser TDP was able to beat it and they, they did it a couple of times that year but they were saying stomaching that $700 price tag it was uh, it was a hard pill to swallow and I would have to agree with them now that there's uh, you know this doesn't look so hot two or three generations later but you know I guess a lot has changed and I shouldn't really be too hard on this this was a flagship product and a lot of people love them and a lot of people as we see I've got two of them ran them in SLI and got some crazy performance out of them, which you can sort of do and definitely were able to do before the VRAM expectations got so high. So was there ever a higher VRAM version of the 780 Ti? Well, I guess they didn't want to cannibalize their uh, Titan series because no, there was actually a higher core, or, uh, memory count version of the 780, which is a much lesser graphics card than this. But I, it would be interesting to compare a 780 versus a 780 Ti these days, but a six gig model, which are pretty rare to find, versus the three gig uh, 780 Ti. That would be a very interesting comparison. If I could ever get my hands on a six gigabyte uh, 780, I would definitely like to do that. But we see old WCCF Tech TV. <laughs> We're doing the same things back on March 22nd of 2014, proclaiming that we would see six gig versions of the 780 Ti and I have not found an example of this if it exists because they already had one. It was their Titan Black. So it wouldn't make sense for them to do that. Even though some of their lesser cards, even the 770 had a four gigabyte version, even the 680 had a four gigabyte version and this never got that high with the VRAM, which really hurts it in you know modern day titles. But I guess their plan worked because it really doesn't matter too much. So let's go ahead and get on to the benchmarks. That way you can really have an idea of how this thing performs. Would you expect a flagship product from 2013, 2014 to be able to still pound out some benchmarks and get greater than 60 frames a second at 1080p? Well, let's check it out. Woo!
we go. I gotta say, I was a little disappointed with the outcome. And I know for a fact, having owned a Titan Black, that the whole reason why this didn't perform as hot as it should was because of the lack of the rim. The processing core in this can get the job done, but with some modern architectures and games geared more towards it, I was surprised that Apex Legends was, the performance on it was that low. You'd imagine on an eSports style title that actually does very well with budget CPUs from later generations would do so poorly, like not that it was poor, it was still getting you know a, a, a respectable frame rate and the frame times with this actually weren't so bad in most of the games. But I had to go in to Apex Legends and give it a budget of three gigabytes, which means some textures aren't gonna be quite as smooth at, you know, a 1080p is fairly easy to run, as a 1063 gigabyte would get the same performance as this. And a 1066 gigabyte would kill Apex Legends. And you'd be able to max all the settings out. But I typically had to move the slider down for this in those 2019 titles from ultra or highest settings to high and maybe even reduce the anti-aliasing or a few things that would reduce the VRAM count on this. There are some games that are better optimized for it, like you saw Devil May Cry there. Was killing it with this thing. Not a problem running it. And it's a very good looking, very good looking girls in that game. I mean, very good looking game. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a very, very good looking game. It's based on the uh, Resident Evil engine, which I believe is a very awesome engine for how good it looks and how like the fidelity, especially when you get into like really high resolutions like 4K and stuff, how awesome and optimized it is that it can run a uh, full tilt on this card. That's pretty awesome. So it's possible. Far Cry, you know, another game, I could max out on this. But uh, some other games, it's just, you know, I had to go to high. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I was pretty disappointed of the performance of the 780 Ti. I, I was having a hard time getting it to really run well, especially running in like the, the villages when there's a lot of NPCs around. There's something weird about older generation cards in that game. Like the, uh, the other Tomb Raider games were always like staples of like, you can get really good graphical fidelity with like not that great of a, you know, be, you're, you're able to put it on like high on a budget card. That game is not forgiving. And uh, same with like, but it did well with Battlefield. I think as long as the games are kind of optimized, for lower RAM count or lower, uh, you know, graphics memory count, that it'll work out. But that's a little bit above my pay grade. I'm just kind of speculating there. So, what did you think of the benchmarks of the 780 Ti? Are you still running a 780 Ti? Did you always pine after one, or did you enjoy, you know, the revamp going into Maxwell much better? And a 980 Ti, now that's still a viable card, and I might get my hands on a few of those to play with in the future. Although I already have messed with the 980 Ti, I really like them. I also really like to test the 980 alone, which I haven't come across one yet. But uh, as far as the 780 Ti goes, you can pick these up for pretty low prices. Here on eBay, we see that, uh, you know, like 160 bucks, 150 bucks. Uh, you know, buy it now is somewhere around $150. There's one right there. That's a pretty good value because it's, you know, a little bit more premium of a product, I'd say, than most uh, 1060s, you know, 10, three gigabyte versions. You might feel better having this in your system over that, even though it can technically be a little bit faster. But I think at least new, you'd have a hard time finding even a 1063 gigabyte near $150 these days. So this could be a bargain, especially on a local pickup, like a Kijiji or a Craigslist pickup. You know, these are tried and true in NVIDIA cards. They don't tend to die quite like AMD cards. I, I'm saying that, at least not in my experience. A lot of people would probably argue that point, but uh, you can usually, you know, if you pick up an NVIDIA card from Kepler or beyond, they usually just run forever. So at least there's that sticking there, but great budget card to get, you know, these days. But Keep in mind, a 1063 gigabyte can be just a smidgen faster. Just a smidgen. So, I don't know what's going to be doing on Instagram and Twitter. I want to thank Aaron for letting me borrow these. This is awesome. Fun to play with. Let me know uh, how soon you want to see that SLI follow-up because I think it'll just be fun to play around with them. Maybe I'll even hook up the water blocks on them depending on what kind of time I got to do that. That would be quite the adventure to do, but 
maybe I would do that, see how far these the babies can really run, but definitely do an SLI video and uh, look forward in the future to some, you know, always have stuff down the pipeline. Hit that subscribe button. As always, I have a Patreon, or if you have some hardware you'd like to donate to the channel, me at TimmyJoe.com. And I want to thank you guys for watching, at watching Joe Instagram and Twitter, but as far as I'm concerned, this guy here is a little too hot, a little too lacking on the VRAM to be a complete recommendation. But if you can get one locally for like 140 bucks, it's a great card to throw in a system with like a Core i5 in place in games at 1080p. And yeah, you might have to bring the settings down just a bit, but you'll probably be able to play high and still break your six, uh, 60 frames a second. And on some games like Fortnite or whatever, you could play with the settings, bring them down from Epic and run a high refresh rate monitor with one of these still, it's definitely possible. But uh, I watched Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. That's all I had to say about the 780 Ti. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in another video. Talk to you later. Woo!